On this episode of the John 1911 podcast, hello, sweet cheeks, mailing list migration done, grip safety sensitivity, and the FBI was spying for Russia? Okay, good evening, everybody. This is episode 312 of the John 1911 podcast. It is, what is it today? Uh, it is Tuesday, I think it's the 8th, Tuesday the 8th. It's about, now about quarter till 11 uh, Eastern Standard Time, so a little bit late. Doing a solo podcast tonight. Uh, I'm going to catch you guys up on some stuff that's been going on, uh, I guess, in the background, and then some things that have been going on, uh, I guess, around the world and, you know, all that. So, uh, first things first, uh, something fun. I want to get this out of the way. The title of this episode will be Hello, Swede Cheeks. That's S-W-E-D-E. Um, I can't remember who you are, but uh, I posted about the M41B sniper rifle, and uh, you had left a comment saying, Hello, Swede Cheeks. And I just got the biggest the biggest kick out of that. And um, I don't know if that's something that, you know, all you Milserp guys use on the internet and your gun forums, but... Um, I, I decided that is absolutely going to be that's going to be uh, the title the title of the podcast. So uh, I'm stealing it. Um, second thing is uh, I want to thank all of you who um, actually know 100 uh, percent of you because none of you have unsubscribed from the mailing list. So uh, last week, just as I'm getting ready to go out of town and go to D.C. Um, an issue develops with our uh, email, our newsletter service. So um, I'm not going to name which company this is. Um, you know, you can, you know, if you want to send, if you're a business and you want to send emails to people, you hire, you you use a service to uh, to publish those because you know you're sending out. You can't send, you know, twenty thousand emails from your you know, your Apple inbox because that'll get flagged to spam and, and you know, the, the mail service can't handle it. Nope, that, that, that makes sense. So, but, um, your relationship with these, with these companies, I mean, it's a pretty closed, uh, close to the best relationship because you're dealing with sensitive information. Uh, we don't give people access to it. You know, things are, things are, you know, highly controlled. And, um, we have used this particular company, uh, for 10 years, literally, it's just, it was 10 years in April. And uh, we were going through the process of what we call, in the ma- I guess in the mailing list game, kind of, a, you know, cleaning the list up. So, you know, if we get, if, if there's, sometimes we'll get people that'll sign up to the mailing list that y- if you look at their email address, it's obvious that it's, they're not real, or it's, you know, it's, it, you know, it, it's like a sales thing or it's like some kind of corporate thing where they're like, okay, like they're trying to sell us something like an S the biggest offenders would be like web development or SEO companies. And so, you know, we'll see, you know, we'll see an email in the mailing list. And it'll be like, you know, uh, John at, you know, big dick SEO.com or something, you know? And so, you know, we, we go through it and we cure that kind of stuff. So, Um, when we were in our latest round of doing this, our provider after 10 years decided they were going to raise our rates 700%. And, um, which was, you know, shocking. And also bear in mind, um, unlike a lot of people that you probably get bail from or emails from, um, our mailing list is huge. And so we have to pay for it. And so we're paying a significant amount of money to, you know, be able to push this many emails. And then on top of it, you want to up it up 700%. And it's like, uh, hell the fuck no, that's not going to happen. So, um, you know, I, I have to now put this on my to-do list ahead of a bunch of other projects on top of I'm traveling. So I had sent out, hence the thank you, I had sent out to all of you, you know, hey, FYI, we're going to be missing... Uh, a newsletter possibly um, on Saturday and I don't know if it did Tuesday or not, but last week, maybe, maybe we sent it out on Tuesday saying, Hey, we're probably going to go dark for about a week. And then hopefully we'll be back up the following Tuesday. Cause we do Tuesdays and Saturdays for the newsletter. And, um, a big, you know, big, big, a lot of work on the back end, tearing all this stuff apart, 
getting rid of all the stuff so no one has access to it, making sure it's, it's secure and all that. And then we, we, we migrate over to the new system um, and get it all set up. We still have to, I still have to do some tweaking. Like, for example, you cannot, like right now, we have the new software set up, but you cannot sign up to join our, our mailing list. There's no way to sign up on the website. I had to rip all the old stuff out because it's for the old company. So, um, you know, we go through this process and... You know, it's a new company, a new, a new, a new vendor, and they don't know us from, you know, Shinola. Like, you know, we were at the other company for 10 years. And so they're like, you know, well, your guns, and then it's, you know, well, you know, it's this gun lifestyle thing. And then, you know, who are all these people? And, you know, what's the condition of this list? And, you know, they're, they're giving us all, you know, we, you have to go through the hoops. They don't, they don't know who we are. So we start working through the process. And we sent out, uh, I sent out a, we missed the Saturday newsletter. And so I had some stuff built up. I was ready Sunday, this past Sunday, so three days ago. And uh, I just sent out a, a little newsletter. And the open rate, I'm, you know what, I'm not going to say what the open rate is, but the open rate is sky high. <laughs> the open rate is sky high. Not a single unsubscribe. Not a single unsubscribe. Um, and it's a large list, and the open rate is sky high. Um, and so the that was on Sunday, and then the new vendor's like, uh-huh. So they're like, well, we, you're, a, you're a large you know, contractor, so we need to get you and your website and your servers kind of up to the next tier for, you know, and get you vetted. So, you know, our stuff doesn't end up in a spam folder. And so we went through that on over the weekend. And then I set up a very small, regularly scheduled message uh, today. It came out this morning at seven o'clock. So and not a single one of you in two newsletters has unsubscribed. Um, we did have four of you hard bounce, which uh, means, you know, like the email's dead. And so it, it you know, it those get deleted. But, uh, you know, our it, it was it was impressive. It was impressive to the to the new company. It made me proud of the work we've done, and I wanted to thank all of you for bearing with us. We will back be back to our regular you know schedule of just Tuesdays and Saturdays in your inbox. And I guess it's worth mentioning there was a, you know it's 2023. It's the it's the summer of 2023, and we've been through all these ups and downs with social media, you know, and you know, Facebook is big. And then there was the great, the great, whatever at Facebook. And then there's, you know, YouTube is big. And then, you know, then there was all this issue, all these problems. And then it was, everybody's uh, really big on Instagram. And now Instagram is apparently, uh, 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 in a dumpster. We got a notice from Instagram recently that because we are firearms type of content, that they're not going to show any of our stuff to people that don't follow us. So we can't grow. You can't get the network effect, which, you know, to me doesn't really bother me because I know they've done that to everybody else. And then, um, I guess over the past week or so, I've been seeing rumblings of, um, I guess, Patreon when a lot of folks have now, because they're vulnerable to Patreon, they have, um, Patreon's been kicking their ass, uh, limiting gun content. And I don't like a lot of these companies. I don't even know how they're supposed to, you know, if they're in our space, you know, they can't even have gun based content. They're not selling guns. They just can't have guns or something. And it's just like, well, you know, cause you're vulnerable. And so I'm saying all that to say this, you know, we warned you, we warned all you guys, like, look, we have a Facebook account. It's a, we have a big Facebook page. We have a YouTube account. We publish to it. You know, we have an Instagram and I, I throw some stuff up there. I got, I threw some stuff up there today. Um, we monitor it, we use it. Um, but home base for us will always be our website because you can't take that away from us. And after, I don't know how many years it is, 13 years of, um, you know, it's over 10 years of, uh, publishing content. Uh, it's a, you know, pretty robust site. It's got a lot of stuff on it. So, you know, there's a, its own network effect. If people are Googling certain subjects or topics or types of guns, 
our stuff starts to come up because it's authoritative in rankings. I'm not going to say that we know what we're doing, but it's authoritative on the internet, authoritative in the algorithms. Um, and, um, you know, it works. So it's the long game. It's not the short game. I mean, Hey, everyone wants to go viral. I'm, you know, we're not really big into the whole minstrel show. I don't want, you know, I don't want to be, you know, be a, you know, be a clown on, on the internet. Um, uh, but you know, and some of the short form stuff that, you know, the TikTok the TikTok stuff or the, or the reels, that's okay. But you know, it's not really our, our bread and butter. We'll do something like when an idea strikes me. Um, I'm every time the idea strikes me, the bread of people run for the hills. Uh, that's an inside joke. If you uh, follow the shorts, but anyway, I want to thank all of you for tolerating us and for being such good sports with the newsletter and the emails. And, um, thank you. I hate to have to do this, because I'm not bringing it up from the sense of, you know, everyone else is bringing it up. I'm bringing this up because it was such a high traffic item. Again, while I was traveling and dealing with email issue, I published this video because I had somehow it was brought, I'd seen it or brought to my attention and we were one of the first people to publish it. I'm not going to say we were the first, but the SIG P320 that fired in the holster uh, up there in Connecticut. And so... I'm traveling, um, flying, I'm dealing with other stuff. And then there's all this, you know, all this drama with this P3, this P320 and, you know, comments and, you know, moderation on YouTube. Um, I don't think we might've put it up on the website. I don't remember. And, you know, everyone's got their, their pet, their, their pet opinions and theories, but, you know, very quickly you can see. Um, a lot of these arguments are really, it's just Jersey waving, you know, it's like, it's like football, you know, it's the, I don't know, the 49ers, you know, on one side and, you know, the Dallas Cowboys on the other side. And, you know, they're not really that interested in facts. They're interested in the gotcha and winning and not really the truth. Um, and so, you know, a lot of people, they will, they will get tunnel vision on a data point or a, um, you know, or something that somebody says that confirms what they want to be true. And they will ignore the stuff that, that hurts, you know, the, the, the argument that they, the things that they want to be true. And, you know, I guess one of the examples that we had seen was, and we had multiple people reference this and we didn't have, let me say this. I have not had to, I didn't have to ban anybody on YouTube, um, over the 320 video, but I have, we definitely had to remove some comments because it was getting very salty Be, and it basically, it boiled down to this. Um, somebody would have an opinion, you know, about, about the 320 another person would have a different opinion about the 320 and then it would just turn into a giant cat fight fur ball like how dare you have an opinion that's different from mine because mine is right and it's like you know neither of you guys have access to this gun have access to this holster or we're in or in the room and you know it's so we had to do some moderation, nobody got banned, but, you know, we were able to talk a lot of people down and, you know, one of like one of the videos that was one of the things that was being brought to our attention, I, I didn't want to watch it, um, was somebody's talking about, and I'm reticent to even mention his name. He doesn't know who we are and I don't, I don't care if he does. And I don't, I don't dislike this person, but you know, I've seen this person's content, I'm, you know what, I'm not even going to use his name, but I've seen this person's content in the past and it's just not my style. Um, he, um, you know what, I'll call him, I'll call him Yankee. So, cause I'm, I'm rereading a book, uh, that I bought, uh, 30 years ago called team Yankee, you know, my, my armor guys out there, but know what that is. Um, and so I'll call him Yankee. And so the Yankee guy had a video talking, you know, his opinion. And again, it's his opinions. And he's talk, he's making reference to um, what he believes to be the hood on this level three holster not being in place. But then there's other people saying, no, 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 
if you look at this police department, they run a tourniquet on the front of this holster and he's seeing the tourniquet. And again, it's like, I don't know the answer to this question, but you know, the Yankee guy is saying something because he sees something. Maybe he's right. Maybe he's wrong, but you have to at least entertain the possibility that maybe, you know, maybe something else is there. Maybe there's another thing at play. Um, another thing, I guess on the three twenty, that I think a lot of people, um, probably unfairly harped on. And I th- actually, I can blame Sig for this one because I think Sig's being a Sig passive aggressively was being a dick on this one. And it was the fact Sig released a statement. Um, I think putting out the theory that the gun wasn't holstered or secured properly, which again, there's a, there's some good arguments there you know, that there could have been, could have been an issue, which is user error. Um, but they made a comment at the end of their statement, which is that the, that this connect, this particular police department has refused to give them the gun and holster. And it's like, dun, 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 you know, um, and all the Jersey guys, you know, put on their face paint and, you know, waving their jerseys in the football stadium, you know, for their team. And it's like, you know, Somehow this this is either a conspiracy or somehow this is proof that, you know, somebody's right and somebody's wrong. And it's like, oh, OK, well, let, let me let's let's, you know, I'll cool your jets there, Francis. So the reality that is this is a line of duty weapon discharge that was done while interfacing with a quote, customer, unquote, at the police department. Um, So around other officers on top of it, this is, this is evidence. I mean, and there's a, how evidence is, especially now that there's an issue, there's, there's question as to was it, was it, you know, was it officer negligence? Was it user error? Was it something foreign object or debris in the holster? Is there a design issue with the gun? Is there a design issue with the holster? Is something damaged? Is it, it's not a design issue? Maybe it's maybe it's a, maybe it's a damaged equipment. But irrespective of all of that, what you cannot dismiss here is uh, liability or exposure to potential liability, and it is not much of a reach to imagine some ambulance chasing lawyer, you know, getting a hold of the doper that they were hooking up in the, in the PD and somehow, you know, filing a civil suit claiming, you know, whatever, you know, whatever scratch off lottery ticket bullshit, you know, civil thing. And he's got PTSD because his gun went off, you know, and the PD is going to have to defend it. And the city insurance is going to have to defend it. And, you know, if it is officer negligence, or human error that has to be factored in if it is not, or if the city or the officer, if they rightly believe it, that, that, you know, that what if they think they're innocent and they're, but they're not, they have the right to defend themselves. If they send this shit off to SIG, it is fucking gone. And, um, it also messes up with the whole chain of custody, how you handle evidence. There is no way SIG is going to get this gun right now. Now, and SIG saying this, I think was a dick move because they fucking know that. That's my really only complaint here. So now I'm not saying that SIG's never going to get this gun or SIG's not going to see this gun, but you got to understand, okay? Depending on the size of the police department, there is either going to be a training cadre or some kind of authority within that police department that's going to investigate officer involved shootings. This equipment is either authorized or chosen based off the recommendation of some other group or agency. And so it either comes internally from the police department or it can come from the state, uh, you know, the state police regulatory agency or possibly the state police, however they handle it. You know, like we have uh, in Ohio here, we have something called OPATA. And so it's the controlling state of Ohio um, 
you know, police standards, training, and, 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 and organization for the state. And so large police departments in the state of Ohio, like, say, Cincinnati or maybe Cleveland, they probably have their own police academies. Well, if you're, you know, if you're a little small town police department, you know, 60 officers, you know, you don't go to, you know, you don't, they don't have their own police academies. They have to go someplace. Well, there's, 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 there's agencies or organizations that are set up to handle all this. And there's organizations that not only set up the training and the standards, but the table of equipment and, you know, qualifications for the state. And all of this is necessary because somebody's writing insurance on this. And so what's going to happen is the gun and equipment is going to be handled internally at the PD. It might end up if they can't don't have the ability to handle it. It's possible like it could end up with the sheriff's office or a pro, uh, if, if they're, you know, in, like in Ohio, we would have a, a depending on if it's a small town police department in a poor county, you could as an independent investigator, you could have a prosecutor's office has its own investigators and sometimes they can handle that or you kick it up to the state because, you know, the state has the resources to do this kind of stuff like big murder investigations or forensics. These little poor counties, little poor police departments, they don't have forensics labs. They don't have access to this stuff. The state does it. So this is going to go to the PD. Then it could go to the sheriff and then it could go to the state. And it is entirely possible that when transiting guarantee, when it gets to the state, that the state, when they have custody of the gun and if they're checking the gun, or if there's a question, if they determine, like, everyone keeps looking at the gun and they're like, we don't see anything wrong with this gun. Or, or, you know, we don't, you know, they're not able to determine, you know, user error and it keeps going up and up and up. At some point, SIG may be brought in or engineers may be brought in, but SIG isn't going to get the gun. Or at the very least, SIG isn't going to get the gun until after it's thoroughly documented, dissected, and um, categorized for the record of what the condition of the gun is. And for SIG, their statement about, well, they didn't give us the gun, it's like, well, that was bullshit. They shouldn't have said that. The lawyers that work at SIG, they know better than to fucking do that. And the people that work in this space, they know better. Uh, you know. And, and the fact that SIG even would release that comment... That's the one thing I can kick them on because it gets all the people that are ignorant of how this works all fired up for no reason. Okay, small administrative note. I got to bring this one up because this was kind of scary. And I, I just, I literally want to say this for our benefit. Um, I haven't followed the story, don't really care that much. Uh, I guess a reference to Elon Musk now eventually got involved or made a, t- uh, made a, uh, an oblique reference to it. So I guess there is a person that works for NASCAR. I assume this person is a driver and this person got on the internet, I guess on some kind of social media account, I would assume Facebook, but who knows and liked a meme or liked some kind of post, but I guess it was a meme. It's my understanding, you know, they just liked it. And, you know, I don't know what the definition of a like is or what they did. If it's like a hard or, a shock or a thumbs up or whatever it is. But apparently because they have a, you know, um, an account with a large following, they, they will show up near the top, especially, you know, if for all their followers. And so very quickly, the fact that this guy had liked this, it got out and I guess it was something off color or not politically correct or whatever it was. Or maybe it's pretty crappy. I don't even know. And, you know, I guess the guy lost his job. He got fired and it's like, I just want to make a point here Um, on our social media um, likes and hearts are not endorsements from John 1911. And we have done this for years. And so on social, on Facebook, our website, on Instagram, on YouTube, um, if you leave a comment, you will know that I have read that comment when you see a thumbs up from us and, a, and, you know, like something where we've interfaced with it. It is not a, it is not a an endorsement of the comment. It's not a, whatever, it's, it's an acknowledgement from us that John 1911, we see you individually, Joe Schmo, John Doe, you know, uh, 
Jane Wayne, whatever your name is. We read your comment, we've consumed your comment, and we have formed an opinion on it. Now, um, many times we'll respond to it, but sometimes we don't. Now, if something if something is particularly egregious, you know, we may, you know, I mean, I mean, we would just remove the comment. Um, so, but anyway, I just want to go ahead and say this for future, the future proof. We have never used the thumbs up or interfacing with your comment from our corporate perspective as an endorsement or not as endorsement. It's merely an acknowledgement that we have read that comment. We see you and um, you're being heard. So, you know, don't, don't at me, bro. A couple people sent this to me and it was worth discussing because, well, you know, we're 1911 guys. So um, there's a company out there called ACW. I think that is Alchemy. And, um, I believe it's the either the owner of this company or the head gunsmith at this company. Um, he had put out a video, and he was the the and the video is going to be a misnomer for this conversation. But I had multiple people ask me about this, and it's worth addressing because I have a strong opinion on this. And so I believe the video is titled something about tactile safeties, tactile thumb safeties. Um, and you know, which isn't really the right phrase. I think they're really talking about, you know, whether having a mushy thumb safety or a thumb safety with positive, you know, on off or clicks, you know, to to a certain level, um, you know, a translation, you know, a Kimber, uh, safety versus, you know, a, a safety from a full custom shop, right. You know, like the big difference, but at the end of that video, he makes a comment about grip safety sensitivity is what we refer to it as. And it's a with sensitivity is relatively a new thing. Um, no one called it sensitivity 25, 30 years ago. I'm just telling you. But um, what it is, is, you know, on a, on a traditional 1911, there's a grip safety. And you have to depress that grip safety so the gun will fire. And there's that grip safety moves... I don't know. At the bottom, it can move maybe four and a half, maybe five millimeters, possibly, you know, at the very bottom of the grip safety. And so the debate is how far should that grip safety be depressible until the gun can fire? And what is it's a notor- it's a notorious weakness problem with 1911s, especially for self-defense uses are grip safeties that require a perfect hand position to engage. And what happens is, um, you know, if you're in a defensive shooting, which typically will come, you know, after a physical altercation or during a physical altercation, possibly on the ground, many times on the ground, possibly one handed, you know, you're doing like a high, you know, high chest, just, you know, these crazy positions, people end up where they haven't depressed the grip safety enough that a gun doesn't fire. And so what's become acceptable for me on self-defense 1911s um, is to make the grip safety so sensitive or easy to deactivate as to mitigate these problems. And so the rule of thumb is like, it goes in 20%. So, and apparently uh, ACW came out and their position is, and it's not, their their logic is sound. Like ACW, their logic is sound. And you can blame the Trial Lawyers Association of America for this. ACW has come out and said, they do not, they do not ship any guns out of their shop with a grip safety that that stays active until uh, it's a 50% grip. I'm trying to think about how to say this. Um, you have to depress it at least 50% before it'll deactivate the grip safety. And they're talking about liability and making sure the gun's safe. I thought that was kind of weird. Um, you know, guns have half cocks on them and there is a thumb safety, but there's a half cock um, 1911s, you know, I mean, 
I don't know. Does a does a Sig P320 have a half cock? Just saying. Inquiring minds want to know. Um, so, you know, people want to know what I thought about this, and it's like, well, I disagree with it 100, especially for self defense guns. I disagree with it 100 for self defense guns. If it is a working gun, if it is a gun, a 1911 that you could be carrying, where I am going to start punching you in your face before you shoot me. I want that 20% grip safety. I I mean, I want that grip safety so sensitive that you could blow on it. And, you know, it depresses it. Um, because when your hands are on the gun, the grip safety is, you know, is in play. If your hands on that gun, it's on that gun for a freaking reason. So, you know, I don't tell ACW um, how to build guns. I don't know how to build guns. They don't tell me how to, uh, how to uh, uh, you know, be in a fist fight with a gun in your hand on the street, because I've been in quite a few of them, including hitting people with guns. And um, with a 1911. Um, and that, that grip safety, an aggressive grip safety, a, a, a grip safety that it takes too much to depress can burn you. And it's, 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 you don't see too much of it today. Um, but the grip safeties on 1911s have been controversial throughout, you know, the modern gunfighting history, probably from about the seventies. And some of the solutions you would have is people would pin them, um, uh, or put rubber bands on them, which I don't advocate that it's a safety. You shouldn't deactivate the safety. Um, you know, other people like a company called Novak, they had a product called the, the answer and you cannot get an answer from them anymore. But the answer was a one piece, um, beaver tail grip safety that also I think connected into possibly the mainspring housing is one piece. And so it basically just filled in the back of the gun to where there was no grip safety and they called it the answer. Um, I believe Novak still sells that, but you have to order it on a custom gun, on a gun that they build. They will not sell you the answer to put on your gun. Again, probably for the same reason at ACW doesn't, you know, they feel like they don't want to have a grip safety that's, you know, less than 50%. Um, you know, the, uh, the, the other solution is to delete the grip safety from the design altogether. Um, Wilson absolutely has done that. Um, that's why they got rid of it on their EDC. The, the Wilson X-Frame guns, um, X9, the SF solid frame guns, X, the X-Frame solid frames, uh, those guns don't have a grip safety. They just went ahead and deleted the idea completely. So, you know, there's different ways to do it. If my gun has a grip safety, I don't have a problem with the grip safety, but if I had a gun, a 1911, I don't care how high end it is. And it, um, it, you know, takes 50% of, uh, uh, of, of movement to disengage that grip safety. That's getting fixed one way or the other, either I'm fixing it, I'm changing it, or you're taking it to gunsmith and you're, and you're changing it. If you're serious, you know, imagine, you know, having your, you know, your lights knocked out you know, you've been smashed in the face with a beer bottle, you're laying on the ground, you got one hand and you're shooting up and you don't have a perfect grip on your gun, that damn grip safety keeps that gun from going off. Not in my book. I disagree with that strongly. And, you know, if if that particular company, I don't know, has a problem with that, I mean, you know, why did that's what they have cocks for. We'll blast through some of these real quick. Just want to, you know, kind of old business, new business to, you know, get through it quick. So, um, yes, we did, you know, we have, uh, we got the, the S S A C S Springfield Armory custom shop, 40 Smith and Wesson. We did, I don't know if I said it on podcast. We did confirm with Springfield that that gun, they did build that gun. They built that gun from the ground up. It's a Colt frame and it's all their stuff on it. And, uh, they built it and it's in 40, um, but don't get it twisted. 40 still sucks. Like, it's not like I'm like advocating 40. Doc around here likes 40. It's fine. I understand. You know, I mean, it, it's, it's cool. We have the gun, but I'm, we're not, I mean, we, we, 
I was going to today on the range do a 10-8 function test, but I got busy with some other stuff. So we'll do a 10-8 function test with this 40 just for giggles, just to see if it'll pass. But, you know, we're, I'm, I'm, I'm a 9mm 1911 guy, like I really am. So, you know, don't, don't, don't get it twisted. Um, next thing is uh, we have seen the, trigic, the new Trigicon or uh, red dot sights that have come out. I believe, if I understand... Um, they have two, one of them is basically an enclosed emitter act like an acro clone. And the second one, I think the uh, best way I could call it is it's a, basically an RMR. It's like a ruggedized, it's like a, it's an RMR with a big window. So you can either say it's a big window RMR or it's an RMR ruggedized SRO. I don't think it's quite as big as an SRO, but you know, it's, it's got a bigger window. So, um, you know, we have not shot them or, or, you know, we've never, we haven't touched them, but we've seen them. Um, looks interesting. It brings up a question. We've seen all the red dots from all the other companies. And I know that hollow sun, we've had, um, people inquire, you know, DC talking to you, um, you know, what we recommend for a red dot, you know, if you're, um, you know, looking for something budget, we have heard good things from people that we respect talking about some of the hollow sun red dots, but I can't, I can't keep, I can't keep the model numbers straight to save my life. Like a 507, maybe like, you know, look, look at some of the hollow suns. I personally would not, I don't know, like I, I'd like to stick with aim point or, or Trigicon, but you know, these new Trigicon red dots, you can see Trigicon is starting to pull their prices down. You know, a new model, you know, new thing, prices coming down. They're not $700 or $600 or high fives. I don't know what these new ones are, but, you know, you're starting to see where these mainstream brands are going to have to start bringing the prices down because they are just getting gobbled. They're, they, the piranhas are just eating them alive in the red dot market. So, yeah, we've seen them um, on the Internet like you have. Um, I'm not not really gear queers over here. Um, there might be another gun or two that we could use a red dot on, but I've been putting off buying it cause I don't like to buy the, you know, you know, the, the cheap red dots we had, you know, uh, freeze had messed with a, uh, a Bushnell some years ago. And that was just a, that was a dumpster fire, you know, lesson learned. But so, yeah, we've looked at that. Um, I thought it was interesting too, for the, cause the, you know, we get a lot of people that, that follow us because, you know, we run the Wilson X9 L gun. Um, Wilson has come out with a, their solid frame, uh, their SFT nine, but they've now got one with a light rail so that, uh, you know, I'm all about, I think every modern working 1911 sold today, I understand the aesthetic market or uh, argument, but you know, I think it's got to have a light rail on it. It's got to be cut for, for a red dot because it's the future and you're going to need it. If you're serious about carrying it for work or serious training or doing whatever, you need to be able to stick a light on that thing and you need to be able to, you know, put a red dot on it. Um, you know, being able to convert it uh, from red dot to irons like that, and that Nighthawk system that looks really, really interesting to me. But, you know, it's, it, it's, you know, come on. Like you really, you don't want to, you don't want to be in a situation where you're doing low light, no light training and you're, and you're the one dude, you know, because you have to switch guns because you're one favorite gun that you shoot or most most familiar with because you're totally into that gun can't hang a damn light on it that's just stupid i mean so like you know if you're serious if that gun is serious i don't care what it is get it with a light so sft9 with uh, from wilson with a light rail get it yeah um also it was interesting um the there you know there are two basic forms of finishes on guns today you've got the what i call shake and bake um the spray on whatever you know finishes and then you've got the um dlc coatings the diamond like coating which is like a if i say tenifer but you know it's the nitride of some kind whatever fancy finish so and i guess you know they're 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 pretty durable you know like we have a spray on uh, finish on our X9L and you know we're we're pretty pretty famous for tearing that up because we we carry it and shoot it every day. Um and you know it gets it gets worked in holsters like dry fire and everything. So, you know, they they wear. Well, one of the things that I thought was interesting was 
You can make the argument if you're such a gear queer and you're worried about wear on your guns, you can make the argument you want DLC, right? You're one of those gun form guys who's like, ooh, I got a scratch on my disc cover. Um, however, not to be outdone, Wilson did something. I think nobody noticed it, but I was like, yowza, this is dynamite. They, that spray on finish, it's like on my gun and, you know, um, that, that they do whatever, maybe it's armor tough. I, I, I can't remember what, what Wilson calls their finish, but you know, it's, they're all kind of the same. What they do is when the, um, is when the, uh, uh, the, the finish is wet or do they, so they spray, they, they put a coat on it. Then they throw this media. Like I'm not, I'm going to call it pumice. I don't know what it is, but they're throwing some kind of media into the finish when it's wet and then hitting it again. And so, or th- that may not be how they apply it, but they're, they're putting texture, a pretty aggressive texture into the shake, the bake, uh, shake and bake finish if you want it. And I think that is, I think that's just awesome. I mean, because, you know, the reality is for a performance-based shooter with a gun, I don't care what the gun is, you want that gun locked in your hand like it's a giant leech. Like, you don't want that thing to move at all. Like, it's it better draw blood because you're trying to keep those sights coming back to the same spot with minimal flip. And anything that helps that cause is a win. And I thought that was, I thought that was great. So, um, yeah. So, you know, if you're interested in that, uh, check out Wilson, see if they'll do it for you. I'd love to hear some real world examples of it. So there's a story out of Florida. It's, it's not a story. It's a guy on the internet and I ran across him and I think he's on Instagram. He might be on TikTok. I'm not sure. I don't have a TikTok account, but people will cross post it. And it's, he's called the armed fisherman. And so he walks around. I'm, I'm not, you know what? That's not right. He is a guy that fishes. He's a fisherman. And looking at the actually funny that I, I now that I'm thinking about this, because the um I've never seen video of him. I've seen video of police because he wears a body cam that this this armed fisherman. He walks around with an AR-15 and um he goes fishing. Now I think this may come as a shock to a lot of people. Um, but apparently if I understand, I don't believe Florida is an open carry state, but they might have, and it makes sense. They might have some kind of exclusion or exception if you're engaged in, you know, hunting, sporting, fishing activities, you know, you're like, why would you need to carry an open gun when you're fishing? Well, I don't know. Alligators would be one. Um, so what he does is he fishes or he'll, he'll be somewhere fishing and he's got an AR-15 somewhere on his body or he'll be walking to his fishing hole and, you know, cops will come up and people will call. There's a man walking down the street with an AR and, you know, there's two sides to this coin. Um, and, and, and I'm not, I'm not, look, when I, when I click like and whatever, I'm not endorsing either, either side. I'm just saying I recognize both sides. So, um, what he's trying to do is he is trying to inform people in Florida and the general populace about gun rights and open carry and how guns aren't bad. And he's on the bleeding edge of gun rights in Florida. He really is the other side of the argument. And it is, I have made this argument myself, you know, Dudes that walk into Starbucks with AR-15 slung over their back. It de- you know, I guess it depends on where you're at. You know, their cowboy rules don't scare the horses. Now, with that being said, I can't tell you that story without telling you this story. And this story is about CCW in the state of Ohio. So, without rehashing all of it, Getting the right to, for, for concealed carry weapons permits in Ohio was a long and terrible fight. And surprise, surprise, the main people that were um, the main people that were stopping it were the Republicans because because con- Ohio was dominated by these what you would call today Rhino Republicans, John Kasich. Um, there was the uh, Bob Taft, uh, George Voinovich. And, um, you know, and, and, and these, these, 
you know, mealy mouth, Mitt Romney Republicans. And so there was a growing groundswell to pass CCW in Ohio. And one of the biggest drivers of that was a hairdresser in Ohio, in Cincinnati, Ohio, of all places, a hairdresser. And so if I can't, if I remember exactly how the laws worked, Ohio didn't, Ohio allowed open carry, but you could be arrested for disturbing the peace or something like that. Like if people complained, but open carry was not prohibited. So, you know, if you were in a small town and you open carried or you're like out in these rural areas, it wasn't that big of a deal. You know, you go walking through since downtown Cincinnati, you're going to make it about a hundred yards and you know, you're going to get, you're going to get jammed up. So this guy, this, um, this hairdresser, not only was a hairdresser, he had, he was a hairdresser in like the she, she part of town. Like what I would call the Beverly Hills of, um, of, of Cincinnati. So he had this high end hairdresser and he probably charged high end money and he made a lot of money. So he happened to live in the Beverly Hills, uh, area. So he could walk, he would walk to his, um, to his hair salon. And I don't know if he was gay or not. Um, not that it matters, but you know, it'd be interesting if he was. So what he started doing is he somehow at some point in his life, he, um, he got interested or is pro gun or interested in, in this issue. So, you know, what he would do is he started open carrying and I don't remember if he, you can look some of this up. If you look at the media reports, I think what he would do is he would non-emergency. Okay. He would call the police department, non-emergency. He would call and he would say, hi, you know, I'm John Doe, whatever his name was. And I'm going to be walking to work, uh, tomorrow or today, um, from, you know, what, like three blocks or whatever he would walk. And I'm going to be walking to my, my, my shop. And, um, this is my name and I'm going to be open carrying. Everything's fine. And I just want to let you guys know. And so he'd start walking. Some people would be complaining. And then eventually got to the point the police would, he would call the police and, you know, and then the police would be waiting and they would be watching. And it got to be this thing every day. The police had to come because he's open carrying and they didn't want people to freak the fuck out. And it turned the volume up to 11. Okay. In the state of Ohio. And it was, this is fucking crazy. Okay. If, why can't this guy cover his gun and stop freaking people out? And people that previously were like, they weren't for CCW. Suddenly they're like, this is so impractical. This is bonkers. Okay. Criminals put, hide their guns all the time, but a law abiding citizen, he has to carry his guns open. You know, he gets to scare the horses because he has no choice because he has to follow the law. And so this guy, this crazy ass hairdresser in the Beverly Hills part of Cincinnati was one of the seminal reasons why we got CCW passed in Ohio. By the way, the governor that passed and signed CCW in the state of Ohio was a Democrat because the Republican legislature um, basically ran it down a certain, he was like, yeah, he signed it where the, 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 uh, the Republican governors, they would kick it, they would veto it. And it's like just how crazy things are. So, you know, the armed fisherman guy down there in Florida, like, you know, look, I'm going to speak in stereotype and tropes and I, I don't mean to be, you know, like Florida man, you know, but I don't know. Like, I think there's a lot of people that live in different parts of the country that just assume in Florida, you can do anything. And, you know, I assure you, there's a lot of police officers now that people are shocked to find out what they can't get away with. And open carry is apparently one of them in the state of Florida. And there's a guy who has a YouTube channel or Twitter account or Instagram, and he's called the Armed Fisherman. I, I've i never seen the Armed Fisherman. His face, because he publishes video from his perspective, he wears some kind of like body camera, you know, like a GoPro. He might be a black guy. And so, you know, these cops come up. Some, sometimes the cops come up and they're like, you know, what the fuck's going on? They have rifles, you know, they're kind of nervous. 
And then, you know, and then s- some cops are coming up and like, hey, I know what you're doing. You know, he's the armed fisherman guy. He's can be kind of defensive, you know, especially if you come at him kind of hard. Um, but, you know, he also does. They're like, you can't open carry. He's like, yeah, you can. Uh, rule 502 point whatever. He cites some chapter and verse. And what he is doing, he does this all the time. The eventually you start seeing police officers coming up to be like, hey, we got a call. We know who you are. We have to clear the call. We just want to make contact. You know, it's fine. You know, everything's fine. You know, and the guy can be because he, you know, he can be a little pushy because he's, you know, he's got his agenda. But it's like he is successfully educating people in Florida how bonkers this is. That apparently you can't open carry in Florida. It's like, I don't know, unless you're, unless you are like engaged in like a fishing or hunting activity. So, you know, he'll walk down to the beach with a fishing pole or he'll walk down the fishing pier with a, with an AR 50, with some kind of gun. I assume it's, I think it's almost positive. It's an AR or some kind. And, um, he'll be fishing because the law says, you know, you're engaged in a sporting activity and you're allowed to have a gun open carry. And, you know, it's faster in many cases, depending on what you're doing. You can't, you know, like it's summer, like, you know, you're fishing in the heat and the sun in Florida and you got to what, where, where like a shoot me first vest. Like if you start to think about this, how crazy out of control, a lot of these restrictions are, how impractical they are, how bothersome and cumbersome they are. It starts to change the narrative. And so Stay the happy warrior. Keep doing what you're doing. Mr. Armed Fisherman in Florida, please remember you're not just representing yourself. You're representing us all. Don't embarrass us. Defend the Constitution. March on with your with with your uh, with your campaign. And I wish you great success because it worked here in Ohio. Another uh, uh, listener question. A uh, guy had a it's pretty simple. And I thought we addressed this in the past, but I guess it's worth mentioning again, because sometimes we do this most of the times, most of the 99.99% of the time we do not do this, but there is one time we do. And the question is, should I cover serial numbers on, on my photographs of my guns? Hence photographs, his guns on the internet. Cause you know, if the photograph he's going to keep on his phone, what does it matter? Right. Um, my position is, and you know, you, you know, Look, all, you know, all roads lead to Jerusalem, whichever path you want to take is up to you. You ask me which way I'm going to go. I'll give you, I'll give you some directions, but I'm certainly, my way isn't the only way. My logic is the only logic here. Like I said, we're all going to end up in the same place. Um, my issue is I would say generally it's not really an issue. There are some exceptions. If you work for an agency or if it's an agency gun, um, you know, it could be, you know, you could get in trouble um, because it's not your gun. If you work for a police department or you work for some kind of, you know, age, I, 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 you know, like, you know, there's, there's a lot of people that get issued firearms that aren't what you would consider police officers, like, you know, patrolmen. And, you know, that gun has a serial number on it. And that serial number is on somebody's table of equipment. And that table of equipment is not your personal property. So, you know, you got to be careful. Um, you know, it can be used to identify who you like, like a nightstand pick. Oh, I'm traveling, you know, going to good night, everybody. This is my nightstand pick or my EDC nightstand photograph at the hotel. And, you know, some Smith and Wesson with this number on it and somebody, you know, and it's the, you know, it belongs to the local police department. And it's like, well, you know, you're publishing on the internet. They all have policies. These policies are getting more and more strict about, you know, representing us, representing, you know, you know, the, the department or the city and, you know, using city equipment or identifying using uniforms. So, you know, yeah, if it's a work gun, you know, yeah, I, I, I'd probably blur that shit out. Um, another thing to consider would be if you have stalkers or people that are harassing you. Um, this is probably something that probably applies more to men than to women. And what I mean by that is not to be sexist, but I don't think there's a whole lot of girls that are posting pictures of their guns that are showing the serial numbers on the internet. A lot of dudes certainly do. And if you're a guy who's going through this 
I have, um, I just realized I just, I just stepped in it. Um, I have, you know, um, had some amorous women cause me problems. And so I don't want to, that's a conversation for another day, but you know, it's, it's been, you know, I've had some serious problems. So, um, you know, look, <laughs> I say this. Okay. <laughs> look, if you're going through, you know, if you're a guy and you got a gun and you post on the internet and you're like some gun form dude, you know, your girlfriend knows that, you know, you're, you're big on, you know, jframe.com or, or what, you know, whatever bullshit place or you know, whatever you post on John Knight's 11 our comment section. Right. You know, and you're going through a bad breakup and, you know, maybe she keys your car. I don't know. Like at, at what point do you have to like, start being like, Ooh, shit. You know, I don't know. Like it's, it's like, it's, it's like a range of crazy, you know, there's, I don't know, like from, from one would be, I don't know, an occasional cry fo- phone call. And I don't know, maybe 10 would be, uh, the dead rabbit in the pot in the kitchen. Like, I mean, I don't know, but like at some point, if a girl is in your life or, or, or if former, a former girl is, is former in your formerly in your life and she has starting to go, go become more Glenn, uh, you know, Glenn close. Um, you know, no one knows what the hell I'm referencing to no Glenn close the movie. I'm even referencing. It's a shame. You know, you might want to consider possibly just backing off a little bit on some of the stuff because theoretically it's a theory in theory, you know, a crazy person could try to take a serial number and, and maybe claim it as stolen or file a police report or something. You know, again, this would be a crazy person. You know, he's like, well, you would win, like your argument that you could win, you know, like, you know, like you could show the 4473 and the receipt, you know, the receipt from the FFL and the, you know, and, you know, whatever, your records, whatever, you, you know, you've had this gun for, before you met her because you posted it all over jframe.com, you know, neither here nor there. Crazy people don't necessarily think logically. They do shit for short term damage, like your car, you know. Um, so, you know, if you, if you've got, you know, that issue, another thing that, that came to mind and we don't really have this issue here. Um, but I know in like Danny, like in, uh, in places like, uh, Illinois or in Chicago, you have these FOID cards, firearms owner identification cards. And in a lot of these places, the FOID card is so strict, your right to carry a gun. You don't have a right to carry CCW, carry a weapon. You have a right to carry Wilson combat nine, two, five, two, four, two, four, six, seven. Like your gun, you know, like that, like that gun, that serial number is on your permit or is, you know, on, you know, on your, you know, your FOID card. And so, you know, if somebody had was, I don't know how it works in these states, but in theory, if you're concerned or I don't know, like heaven forbid, like your, I don't know, your, your crazy Glenn Close uh, ex-girlfriend, you know, works for the, you know, works for this, you know, the state FOID agency, she can look your shit up, um, you know something, something to consider. So, but generally no, there are some exceptions. Okay. It's police blotter time. And even though it's solo, you're still going to get the full blotter today. So the first one comes out of UK and speaking, I, you know what? I actually didn't plan this. Maybe, maybe it was in the, you know, deepest recesses of my mind. I, I didn't realize this. So this is out of the UK. There's a woman and she had been stalked from the age of 13 to 30. She would get, um, she would get phone calls with these voice, you know, these, uh, these voice, you know, modified voices and, you know, people demanding like, send me, you know, send me dirty pictures or I'm going to kill your family. I don't like all the details. And like, I don't know if she like succumbed to some of it. And, you know, she was young and like, she was being, she was being terrorized. And like, it was a whole thing. Like, you know, she's, her parents are involved in like the police and, you know, like all this, you know, at some point, and then she eventually got to a point where she got access to some kind of software and she was able to basically reverse look up whoever was calling her, contacting her phone. And 
she was able to figure out it was her own uncle. And so it was like, wow, that, you know, so yeah, he got arrested in the UK. So that, that's pretty interesting. Second story. Um, this comes out of Southeast Asia. Um, the woman involved is originally from Russia. Um, but she lives in Southeast Asia and she at Asia and she is a vegan influencer. And so, um, her big claim to fame is, uh, you know, uh, extending your life, health and fitness, you know, being thin and her, 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 her shtick is eating raw vegetables. Like her whole thing is about, you know, like just, you know, whatever argument she wants to make, it's her whole diet is raw, but, and she's, she's pretty skinny. Um, you know, and some people like that. I mean, but she's like really skinny. How skinny is she? Well, you know, call comes in one day at the local, you know, Thailand police department. A uh, woman is found dead and it's this vegan influencer. And uh, they did a, uh, uh, they did a, I mean, I don't think it was much of an autopsy. You have to do just look at her and be like, ah, she starved to death. And so, yeah, the vegan influencer starved to death, uh, you know, eating, e- eating raw vegetables out there in, um, you know, out there in somewhere in the Southeast Asia. So the final one, this is, this is, this is a story on the police blotter. Like you literally, you're like, you, they, you couldn't make this up. You could not, you, if you put this in a story in a Hollywood movie, they would be like, we are not putting that in this movie. Because there is, there is so unbelievably, it's so unbelievable. It's nonsense. So check this out. A former FBI counterintelligence official. So, you know, the FBI spy people that, you know, spy versus spy, who um, was also one of the people that investigated the Trump-Russia collusion allegations. He has pled guilty to working with the Kremlin and a Russian oligarch. His name is Charles Begongle, and um, he will be sentenced probably, I would imagine it's August, probably, I don't know, probably early next year. So, yeah. So, you know, Russia, Russia, Russia. Um, FBI, uh, the FBI spies that are like all trying to get Trump colluding with Russia, one of them is functionally a, uh, you know, been compromised. A, I'm, they're not saying he, they're not saying he was passing secrets, but he certainly, but he certainly had inappropriate relationships with the Russian government and Russian oligarchs, and he's getting jammed up for it. Can't make just, just like, just, I'm, I'm, I can't even believe that I'm reading this shit. You know, and people wonder why, you know, why people vote for Donald Trump. It's because it's stuff like this, you know, and it's like, you know, they want to talk about January 6th. There's a lot to talk about there. You know, they don't want to talk about, uh, you know, trying to overturn, you know, the 2016 election. Anyway. This wraps up episode 312 of the John 19 podcast. If you want to see more stories or pictures or links of anything we discuss, please go to the website at john 19 That's J-O-H-N-1911.com. Remember, it's all about shooting guns and having fun. Everybody, have a good night.